Hello students. Today we will talk about the Hesselbach's triangle. Hesselbach's triangle is also known as inguinal triangle. Now my dear students, this Hesselbach's triangle is a part of your lower anterior abdominal wall. So whenever you are reading the inguinal region, you come across this word Hesselbach's triangle because this triangle is a very important uh, area or landmark when we are talking about the direct and indirect inguinal hernia. So the direct inguinal hernias took place through this triangle which is known as Hesselbach's triangle. So let's see where it is present. Now when you are talking about the lower anterior abdominal wall, you will find that this triangle is situated deep to the posterior wall of inguinal canal. So this is the first thing that again when you are reading this Hesselbach's triangle, you will not find this Hesselbach's on the anterior surface of anterior abdominal wall. For that, you have to go in the posterior side of anterior abdominal wall. The second thing is it can be seen from the inner aspect only or to the lower part of anterior abdominal wall. So this is the one thing that if you want to see the Hesselbach's triangle, it is not visible from the anterior side. It is a feature of the posterior aspect of anterior abdominal wall. So here you can see that if we are doing the dissection on the anterior abdominal wall, you know that these are the two external oblique muscles and these external oblique muscles are going downward to form the superficial ring and the inguinal canal. Then this is your internal oblique muscle. When you will remove the internal oblique muscle, you will have one more muscle. Now this is your transversus abdominis muscle. Now still you are not able to see the Hesselbach's triangle and once you will remove the transversus abdominis, you will find the another layer and this is known as fascia transversalis. Now in the fascia transversalis, you are having the deep inguinal ring. So when you will go downward, here you can see a small opening and this small opening is known as deep inguinal ring. Now if you will see the deep inguinal ring, this deep inguinal ring is related with the artery and this artery is known as inferior epigastric artery which is a branch of external iliac and this after taking origin runs in the posterior surface of anterior abdominal wall and then it enters into the rectus sheath through the arcuate line. Now here, now you can see that this triangle is formed and what are the boundaries of the triangle? So you have seen the one boundary is formed by the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle. One boundary is formed by this inferior epigastric artery and one boundary is formed by the inguinal ligament itself. So what is the boundaries of Hesselbach's triangle? Hesselbach's triangle is bounded laterally by this inferior epigastric artery medially by the lateral border of your rectus abdominis muscle and inferiorly you will have the inguinal ligament. The inferior epigastric artery is also a very important landmark because it is defining the position of deep ring. So this inferior epigastric artery is just medial to this deep ring. So whenever we are doing the laparoscopic dissection of lower anterior abdominal wall, we are locating this deep ring just lateral to inferior epigastric artery pulsation. Clear? So what are the boundaries I explain you? That medially. Now medially what is the boundary? Rectus abdominis muscle. So this is the rectus abdominis muscle. So this lower part is forming the medial boundary. What is the lateral boundary? This is the origin of inferior epigastric which later on enters into the posterior side. So this is your lateral boundary formed by the inferior epigastric. Then what is the inferior boundary? Now this inferior boundary is nothing but this is the inguinal ligament itself and in this way you are having the Hesselbach's triangle. And next to this inferior epigastric artery here what you will find? The deep inguinal ring. What you will find? Deep inguinal ring. So this is the one thing. Second thing, what is the floor? Now this floor is nothing but it is covered by the peritoneum. Now what are the divisions of the Heschel back triangle? What does it mean that this is your inguinal ligament, this is your rectus abdominis muscle and here is your artery. Clear? Now this Heschel back triangle is further divided into the two parts. Now how this is divided into the two part by one structure which is going towards the umbilicus. Now this is your umbilicus. Now from here you will have a artery. This is known as obliterated umbilical artery. This obliterated umbilical artery is going to form a fold and that fold is known as medial umbilical ligament. 
that fold is known as medial umbilical ligament and in this way this Hesselbeck's triangle is divided into the two part lateral half of Hesselbeck's triangle and medial half of Hesselbeck's triangle and next to this artery you are here having the deep inguinal ring clear so this is the division of your Hesselbeck's triangle now out of these two triangle the floor of the triangle in medial side now that means here it is strong why because it is supported by conjoint tendon so here you will have the conjoint tendon what is conjoint tendon conjoint tendon is the composite tendon which is formed by the transversus abdominis and internal oblique muscle fibers while the floor on the lateral side is weak and this weak area of Hesselbeck's triangle is more prone for the direct inguinal hernias. So here we will try to understand this Hesselbeck's triangle and why the medial side of the Hesselbeck's triangle is having the strength with the help of conjoint tendon. So again you can see we have removed the external oblique. Now here you have internal oblique. Now in this lower part you can see that these are the arch fibers of your internal oblique. Now these arch fibers are attaching here on the medial side and this is known as conjoint tendon. So when you are talking about the conjoint tendon, it is formed by the arch fibers of internal oblique and transversus abdominis which are going on the medial side and these fibers are going to form your conjoint tendon. So when you will remove the external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis, posteriorly you are able to see that there is a ring or the opening is present into this fascia transversalis and this is the area where you don't have any support but still this area is showing a support and this support is known as conjoint tendon. So conjoint tendon is providing the support on the medial side so this area is here become weak so if you will have a artery here now this will become your Hesselbeck triangle. In this Hesselbeck triangle, what you are able to understand that this area is remain weak because you don't have conjoint tendon. But this area is strong because here you are having the conjoint tendon. So Hesselbeck triangle is further divided into the two part by a ligament which is known as umbilical ligament and lateral area to the ligament is weak and medial area to the ligament is strong. Clear. Now, here in this video dissection, you can also uh, understand the position of your medial umbilical ligament. Now, here you can see that this is inferior epigastric artery, which are going into the posterior side of the rectus sheath. And here, this white color structure is your obliterated umbilical artery. So, this obliterated umbilical artery dividing this triangle into the two part, this lateral side, this medial side. And I told you that this medial side is having a support and that support is provided by conjoint tendon. That's why when we are talking about the direct inguinal hernias, they are taking place between this part of Heschel, Heschelbeck's triangle rather than this part because here it is having anteriorly placement of your thick conjoint tendon. Clear? So this is the important concept to understand that whenever we are talking about Hesselbeck's triangle, this Hesselbeck's triangle is bounded one side by this inferior epigastric artery, one sided by the lateral border of your rectus abdominis muscle and this is your obliterated umbilical artery which is going towards the umbilicus and this obliterated umbilical artery further divide this Hesselbeck's triangle into the medial side and the lateral side but this medial side is having a support of the conjoint tendon that's why the hernias doesn't occur through this medial portion of the Hesselbeck's triangle hernias occur through this lateral portion of Hesselbeck's triangle clear so whenever you are having this question in your exam what is Hesselbeck's triangle you have to understand that Hesselbeck's triangle one side bounded by the lateral border of rectus abdominis one sided by the inferior epigastric artery and base is formed by the inguinal ligament and this Hesselbeck's triangle further divided into the two part by a obliterated umbilical artery into the lateral and medial half and medial half of the triangle is don't have the tendency for the direct hernias because it is supported by the conjoint tendon. So this is all for the session. Thank you.